The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, They went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Muy buenos días a todos. Today is a special, special day. And before I dive into the readings, of course, as you saw when we processed in, there was a man other than me dressed in white. And it wasn't the Pope, right? A little version of the Pope dressed in white there. Well, today's a special day because our brother here, Martin, or Junior, we call him, will receive his first Holy Communion. Praise the Lord. And what was amazing about it? Well, so cool. God is so amazing, by the way. He's so providential. So when I, we were planning the dates for his, I uh, was talking with his mom, and we're just throwing out different dates. And they said, again, without even looking at the calendar, the offer, we said, hey, well, how about June? How about this June, right? The, today? Uh, how about the, the, the 6th? And we said, ah, that's a good date. I like the n- number. It's good. Fine. That's good. And a couple of days ago, when I was going through the readings to prepare for this homily, Guess what the church celebrates today? The whole worldwide church, all 1.2 billion of us, we are celebrating the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Corpus Christi. Junior, there is no more perfect day for you to receive your first holy communion than today. It's as if God said, all right, I want to choose this day for my, for my little son. For you to receive holy communion. Again, no planning. Praise God. God is good. And so when I began this homily, I want to say a few words in Spanish in the beginning, and then I'll switch over to English. So, uh, so, on, so that way, especially for your family, to speak to your heart. Huh? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Es un honor darles. La bienvenida a ustedes a sus familias en esta ocasión tan especial y jubiloso. No se podría haber escogido un tiempo más perfecto en este día preciso que ustedes han estado atareados preparándose con tanto esfuerzo y recibirán su primera comunión. Este Es el mismo día que toda la iglesia católica alrededor 
de todo el mundo también celebra Corpus Christi. El misterio exacto que ustedes van a recibir. Tomen un momento y piensen que tan extraña en esta enseñanza. Ustedes están a punto de comer Dios. Sí, tú vas a comerte a Dios. Hace dos mil años Jesús le dijo a sus seguidores, tomen y coman el pan. ¿eh? Esto es mi cuerpo. Después tomando el cáliz con el vino, dijo, esta es mi sangre. Desde ese momento, nunca hemos dejado de celebrar lo que ahora llamamos la Santa Misa. ¿Por qué Jesús nos da este regalo de sí mismo en la Santa Comunión? La respuesta es sencilla. Amor. Amor. Jesús nos está enseñando el verdadero camino hacia la felicidad. Escuchen muy claro. El mundo les dirá una respuesta distinta. Les dirá que el dinero, poder y placer Cosas, una casa grande, un carro, un carro bonito, te traerán la felicidad. Lo único que tienes que hacer es conseguir más y más, más y más, 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 más. ¿eh? Y luego, mágicamente, llegará la felicidad. Nunca llegará. A pesar de tanto esfuerzo y trabajo, solo encontrarás un corazón vacío. Jesús sabía esto. Él sabe que nosotros fácilmente nos traemos. La verdadera felicidad solo se encuentra dentro del amor. Pero, ahora, déjame preguntarte, ¿cuál es el mayor obstáculo al amor? ¿Qué nos detiene de poder amar a Dios y a las personas a nuestra alrededor. Soberbia. Soberbia. Siempre. Soberbia. Siempre. La soberbia. Mata el amor. Nos dice que nuestra propia voluntad es el rey del universo. En este día Jesús nos muestra una manera mejor. El Dios que creó al universo ahora se hará pequeño. Por medio de las palabras del sacerdote transformará el pan, el vino en su mismo cuerpo y sangre. Y tú te lo come, comerás. Jesús nos dice antes de morir. Les doy un mandamiento nuevo. Que se amen los unos a los otros. Ustedes deben amarse, amarse 
unos a otros como yo los he amado. No hay soberbia en él. En absoluto. Cada vez que recibimos la Santa Comunión, Jesús nos recuerda cómo beber si en realidad queremos ser felices. Today, we celebrate one of the most beautiful gifts Jesus left us. This precious gift that our Lord makes himself present behind the, the symbols of bread and wine. It is no longer just bread or wine on the altar, but it's actually the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. Why do we believe that? But before we dive into that, we must first go back. Just take a brief step back. What did we celebrate last weekend? If you, were, if, you were, if you were joining us here at this Mass, remember the church celebrated the central mystery of Christianity. That Jesus, that God, is a holy trinity. So it answers that question. What is God? God is a trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, if we get that answer wrong, what is God? We will get the answer wrong for what we are and the meaning of the Eucharist. It follows. It's almost, it's, again, as any builder knows, when you, when you mess up on the foundation of a building, what happens to the rest of the floors? You're off. Because the foundation is off to begin with. And so the Holy Trinity is the foundation by which the entire church is built upon. So Jesus answers that question last Sunday. What is God? God is love. God who pours himself out as the Father, pours himself out to the Son, Jesus. Jesus who pours himself out in love to the Father, and their love is the Holy Spirit. So God is a communion of love. That is what he is. And the next now follow the second question. What are we? We are children of God. Harken back now to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. In that beautiful creation narrative, it said that God, when he's about to create you and I, he says, let us create man in our own image and likeness. And then he creates us. And at that precise moment, we come into being. So that means if you and I within us have the image and likeness of God, then all of a sudden the question becomes, what are we? We are made to participate now in the love of the Trinity. We are created for love, you and I. True love. And when you understand that, then it makes sense. Which is why more money, more power, more honor, and more pleasure, pride, will always leave our hearts empty. Hear that again. The endless pursuit of more money, more power, more honor, more pleasure, which our world says to get as much as you can. Puff up your pride. All right, go ahead, live that life then. What's going to happen? Our hearts will be empty. And we'll leave a trail of destruction behind us. And it makes complete sense. Why? Because harken back. What am I? I'm a child of God. I'm created for communion with the Trinity. No wonder nothing else will satisfy the heart. Now enter the next question. Jesus says, 
love one another as I have loved you. What does Jesus do for us? Jesus pours himself out in love. Notice now here, and here is the beautiful point. He pours himself out, not just dying on the cross, but by giving himself in the Holy Eucharist. Why is the Eucharist simply not a spiritual or a symbolic reality? But why, do, why from the very beginning, we have always taught that the Eucharist is the very bodily, the very presence of Jesus Christ? Well, it's because you and I, as being children of God, is that we have bodies. You and I love with our bodies. Two years ago, we celebrated a beautiful holy mass here for a marriage for one of our parish families, the Miller family. And it was a beautiful occasion. The church was packed and Sean and Zoe consecrated their marriage here at this very altar. In fact, on that same, on that same kneeler, which Martin Jr. will receive his first holy communion. Notice what happens on that, on every marriage, in every marriage, when a man and woman come together. They pledge their lives to one another forever, in good times and in bad. And through that sacred oath, a family is created. Their pride must take second place at that moment. After the wedding, we had a beautiful reception in Reno. At a beautiful barn. You know, today barns are all the rage right now. Beautiful. That night, after the reception was over, what do you think Sean and Zoe did? Did they just sit across the room from one another and say, I love you, with their words? No. They united in that marital act with their bodies in order to show the love of their bodies. Where God himself from the very beginning, where the two now become one flesh. See that beautiful word. As they were growing up in their marriage, there was, as, as you know, as beautiful as, as married life can be, there are hardships. It is hard. It is hard. And one of the obstacles that they had was that his wife, Zoe, was a Protestant, a devout Protestant. Sean, a devout Catholic. And so the faith, as often happens, became a point of of argument in their family life. They would argue and argue back and forth. And she even said, Sean, I will not convert just because you want me to. I will only convert if God is calling me there. And she was obstinate. But she, was a, she, was a, she tried to be a good wife, and she would attend Mass. And I would always see her. Her face would always be stern. So I was like, oh, what I do? <laughs> but she would come. She would participate with the family because, you know, they're, they're growing the family. They had their first kid. And so they wanted to, to, to be together. And then all of a sudden, something amazing happened. I want to read you her text message. So... Bear with me. This is from Zoe. I was really just in this place of feeling like there had to be more to my faith. She was going to Living Stones Church in Reno. It's a big non-denominational church there. But I was looking for something more. And I realized that the Eucharist was really that answer. That you can have a real and true physical union with Christ in the Eucharist. Just that Christ gives himself fully in the Eucharist, just as he did on the cross. And thinking about how much I ha- love I have for Sean and how much more love Jesus has for us. It's overwhelming. But at the same time, it was a big aha moment. 
And then just that hunger to have that union really made me evaluate my life so as to receive our Lord worthily. See, what was happening here was that here she is, a newly couple. Now the reality of married life and becoming one flesh is, is, is prominent in her mind now. And then all of a sudden, because sadly, our Protestant brothers and sisters do not believe in the Eucharist. They simply see it as a, as a, a symbol, not in the reality of Christ truly present. And so she was battling against that as a stumbling block in her family life. But then all of a sudden she realized, wait a minute. I love Sean so much and Sean loves me so much that we unite ourselves physically. Why would God then now love me differently if he is indeed the source of love? There has to be a physical component to the love of God because that is how humans love. There has to be a physical component. And then a miracle happened. She was sitting in the back of the church, the last pew. And I always thought she she sat in the last pew because she didn't like me. That's what I always thought. But then I realized, I asked her, why why, why you sat in the back? Well, because they had a newborn baby. And so as you parents here know, when there's a newborn baby, they can cry and do their business at any moment. So she wanted a direct line to go outside to care of the baby. And at one particular Mass, I was preaching about the, the Eucharist. And I used the analogy of married life just as I, I, I am now. And then the scales from her eyes fell. This is what she writes at that Mass. I sobbed the whole time. It was the first time my heart felt what my mind knew. I had done all the reading and research and believed practically. But that was the first time I felt it in my soul. The true presence of Christ right in front of me, available to me. It was the more feeling I had been searching my entire life. The hole that I felt in my Protestant faith was finally filled. Tears of joy. I remember that mass too, because I thought, oh no, what did I say? I'm an idiot. What did I do? Because she was crying the whole time in the back. And from that moment on, she says, how can I not become Catholic? She entered the church the following Easter. And she is on fire for the Lord now. That last part where she said that she, she cried tears of joy, I, I laughed at her because I recall when God gave me that grace. I was just 21 years old. I was at UC Davis at the Newman Center. I was in a packed church and read adoration. And I was staring at Jesus and I sobbed like a little baby. I was 21 then. I'm 87 now. <laughs> and I've never stopped loving the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the Eucharist is the deepest answer to the longing of the human heart because it is Jesus Christ himself. Christ lays down his life for us to teach us how to love, to kill the pride which we all battle with, and to teach us how to love him and to love one another. Ask the Lord at this Mass to deepen your love for the Lord in the Eucharist, to remove the scales and to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. And that is why, Junior, we are excited for you this day. For our Lord has been longing for this since he created you. Do you realize that? That our Lord wanted to unite himself to you so fully. What began at your baptism when you were a baby now will come to fulfillment here. 
And let us pray when the, when the time for the Eucharist comes. Let us beg God to send the Holy Spirit to deepen our faith, especially in our brother here. For the God of the universe will become one with you, the Trinity. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit.